Yes, I yeah. agree. I want to talk about this too. What did uh, what did you want part C number seven? Part C. I'm going to go through every single one of these because there was only, I think, one or two people in the entire class who could do problem number four in its entirety. Most people missed that problem. All right, so for 4A, we got the integral of x squared plus 1 over x squared dx. What is the technique you're going to use to integrate this? Not in foil. Foil. You have to multiply all out. Yeah, why, see, why is this not a u substitution problem? Because if I let my u be this inside, is the derivative going to appear anywhere for me to cancel it? No. So it, I can't use a u substitution. I have to multiply everything out. Now when I multiply it out, is it going to be x squared squared plus 1 over x squared? No. No, because you actually have to distribute in foil. Okay? So this should be the integral will be x to the 4 plus x plus x plus 1 over x squared dx. In other words, the integral x to the 4 plus 2x plus 1 over x squared, which I'll rewrite as an x to the negative 2 dx. So when I integrate, 1 fifth x to the 5th plus x squared minus 1 over x plus c. How many of you forgot your plus c's? I not me. Not me. Right. You do not put an evaluation <laughs> bar if there were no, not, if there was nothing to evaluate it. I saw like three of those mistakes, and I thought <laughs> you completely missed the point. All right, it's when there is nothing to evaluate here. Basically, what that means is that find an antiderivative. When there are numbers here, that means find the area under the curve. The area under the curve is the antiderivative evaluated at both those points when you subtract. Okay, so you do not evaluate if there was no, if there was nothing to evaluate, and you put a plus C when it comes to this. Right, so that was How would people evaluate it? They would put a plus C and write A and B, or some people would skip it and write evaluated at if there was nothing over there. And so I was just like, no. In the book, one thing that made it really clear in the book, it said that um, an, indefinite, an indefinite integral is a function and a definite integral is a number. Yeah, and so I think I even wrote that in your notes too. If you look back in your notes, there should be some sort of a statement about that in your notes. Oh, man. Uh, the thing is that it really yeah. All right. So, that was done like 45 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I had everything done. All right, so that was part A of number four. Let's take a look at part B. The integral of t squared minus 2t right. over t to the fifth ut. And he even did one just like this the day before. How do you do this problem? Break it apart. Break it apart, all right. Some of you thought you moved the t to the fifth up to the top. Moving the t to the fifth up to the top does not mean subtract it, nor does it mean add it. What is this t to the fifth being done? How is it? It's being divided. So if you're going to move it from the denominator to the numerator, you're really multiplying. You're not adding or subtracting. I don't know how many of you did that. I think, like, it shocked the heck out of me. I was tutoring a ninth grader, and she was doing these problems. And I said, tell me you know how to do this. Tell me, please. And she, she could figure it out. So I was frustrated. <laughs> OK, so here's how you do it. You can break it up into two fractions, t squared over t to the fifth minus 2t over t to the fifth. That's one way that you could tackle this mentally. Or mentally, you could say this is t squared minus all times t to the negative fifth, not plus or minus it. Okay. Whichever way you want to do it, it doesn't matter. When you simplify t squared over t to the fifth, what do you get? Uh, t to the negative third? t to the negative three. <coughs> minus, over here, when you simplify, you get minus two t to the negative fourth. Negative four. There you go. All right, so that's simplified. And now you can find the antiderivative pretty straightforward. What's the antiderivative of t to the negative three? Half, negative half t to the negative two. Negative one half t to the negative two. What about minus two t to the negative four? Plus two thirds t to the negative third. Plus two thirds t to the negative three. Not negative five. Why is it not negative five? Because negative five is long. Because you add one, you don't subtract one. Okay? And we're not done. What else do we need? Plus c. Plus c. Okay? And that was all you had to do. All right, let's take a look at number three, or part C, whatever it was. 
Does that make sense how to do that problem? 